Good to see you, Rema. Thank you, darling. Thank you for Good coming. Good to see you too. Thank you for Pleasure. making time for us. <laughs> I, I know I called you at short notice. I know you're busy. Mm. So um, this is pretty much about us, you know, mm. in the in the music industry, in showbiz in general, as women. The other day I was going through my thoughts and it occurred to me, we don't share much in depth about our story, our mm. story to the top. Mm. Many times when people see us on TV, you know, in music videos, winning awards, they think it was a walk in the park. They think, oh, she just woke up and started singing and became a star. Mm -hmm. But actually, if you sit one of us down and we tell you what the journey has been like, you'll find that it's been quite interesting. Take it's been forever. some highs, mm -hmm. it's been some lows, it's been disappointments here, it's been triumphs. Tell me in brief your story. It hasn't been that easy. Yeah. So I thank God that sometimes I can refer to myself as a lucky person, mm. but still it's never that easy, mm. you know. Um, I started really young. Mm. I was really young and I How really young? didn't know. Okay, I, <laughs> I think the first time I went on stage yeah. to sing a song that was recorded, yeah. like my song. Yeah. That was in primary seven. Wow. Okay. Yes. That was younger than I did. And that was my first time on stage. It was mm. at Sheraton. It was um, it was Halima's concert, Mami okay. Halima. Okay. Uh, with some other artists then, the late Dennis Wagler mm. and uh, Trishila. You know, they had like a concert. So <laughs> I had to go on stage and yeah. I recorded a song in a week's time. I recorded mm. a song and then she like taught me how to dance a little, you know, you dance and then you go on stage. And I didn't, honestly, even if like I had like a sister or brother in the audience, they wouldn't know. I wouldn't notice if they were there because I, I, I was trained to look at the top of their heads. Like I couldn't look in anyone's eyes. Yeah. I was very shy, very <laughs> little. And then my people were like, my family was yeah. like, you know what, go back to school. Yeah. After like form six, you yeah. can come back, yeah. you know, and sing. Like you know, try to take it professional. Mm. So I went back to school, and then professionally, I think my that was my senior six vacation. Mm. Yes, and I started with um, with Gagamil. Okay. Yes, and people didn't know me by then. <laughs> I was on stage like every time. Yeah. I used to back up artists. From the word go, from the from the, from the time they play the national anthem, yeah, I had to be backstage, mm -hmm. back everyone up, wow. up to the end of the show. But do you realize that was good training for you? It was, but by then I was like, oh god, yeah. like I, I, at at some point I lost hope oh. because I felt like I overdid it. I even told my boss, mm. because yeah. Because yeah. you see before me, yeah. background. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I was always there. You don't know, like, <clears> over <throat> oh, it's rainy, eh? over oh, it's very cold. What you had to be backstage oh, from the first artist. Yes, and this was different because I was in Gagamel for like a long time, mm. and these other artists that were signed after me, they could come, just get on stage, sing, and go. But I was there backing them and up. You were wondering Whoever why comes, not, like what's not happening with me. <laughs> It wasn't easy. Yeah. And when someone tells you, you know, Rayma, things were easy for you, you know, after Kagama, you were like, you know, we. So tell everything me. Everything was small. So, so it when wasn't. did. Um, because all through here, you're, you're doing backups, backups, backups. Mm. How did season sickle happen? At some point, I, 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 told, I told my boss by then, we were cool, you know what? Uh -uh, I'm tired. Like, <laughs> I used to be very open minded. Like, I'm really tired. I think I want to make it. Yes. And he was like, no, I believe in you. So he calls me one day, Jango Studio. I was like, oh, okay. I thought I was, you know, going to back him up. Like normally yeah. I used to back a few of his songs. Yeah. So on reaching there, he had a track. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you're going to sing. I was like, backing <laughs> you up? No, it's going to be my song. You and me. I was like, yeah. no. Yeah. I got all excited. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me give it a try. Yeah. Season six. So he directed the whole song and 
right there in studio like i i started feeling like the song was really nice but i didn't it. know how far it could go because mm. i'd never you? even had myself play on radio <laughs> i have i still have the memory of when i first heard that song really yes i was in club silk with my sister more partying with my sister mm. and as the dj was playing the music mixing songs i hear this song coming in mm. the first thing i said to laura i said do you hear that girl who is that girl <laughs> i mean it was like uh, like a bulb just went on know. you know because for me every time i hear another female artist joining the industry it excites me especially if they have that outstanding talent mm -hmm. like it just excites me oh. but tell me throughout your journey what are those let's start with the triumphs what are those triumphs you feel have really left you touched like the things that happened to you in your career that you'll never forget big moments maybe one or two the first time i had myself on radio mm. Ooh. i couldn't believe it what did that feel like I know what it feels like, know. but I want to I've know. I've not been to heaven, but it felt like heaven. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I was on a border border and I had the song on speakers Nam Pitao like those. Those big speakers people, you know, people who sell speakers. Yeah. And then I had season sickle. Oh my god. I told the border border guy, stop. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know it was you. <laughs> he Meanwhile. Didn't. I told him that's <laughs> me. He's like ah to <laughs> Nice, nice. To make one you know. Mm. I was like, yes, yes, no, 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 no. To gain it. Wow. <laughs> so that was your first big yes. moment. And, and the other one? It was everything. And the other one, my, my, my what? My first concert. Mm. Like, I didn't, I didn't even believe in myself as well. I was like, okay, now. Who will even come to see me? Like, do you just, mean the I one just, that just like, ended? Not the one this one. Serena? Oh, the first one. The first okay. one. Okay. Yeah, I had a show at Equatorial Equatorial Parking. Yeah. I just let Gaga Mia. Yeah. I had like very few songs, and then oh. this promoter comes. You know what, Rema? To call a concert, I'm like, no, yeah. I can't. Yeah. Like people come, sit down, watch me the whole time. What Who's even going to do that, <laughs> Rema? Yes. No. I didn't, I didn't even have songs. I think I had like about five songs. Okay. You know. And there's some song I had by then. It was, there was only one again and then Kukaliba. Mm. Yeah. And those songs really worked for me. Like they were amazing. Mm. I, I was shocked when I came on stage and the whole place was packed. Wow. I and know the that whole feeling. You must have got teary. It was packed. Oh, I got shocked. Yeah. I got shocked and I was like, okay, now I have to sing for them. I started shaking. They started the song. I didn't start at the right time. <gasps> but people didn't notice. <laughs> yes. They thought, eh, hey, okay, no, artists, I know, but they like get on stage. <laughs> I even I wasn't like, okay. I don't even think people saw me like, oh, I'm be, you know, artists have their own swag and all that. Because I was, I looked at myself like, oh, what, what? I don't know. Hmm. Honestly, I didn't believe in myself until then. that and day. And people didn't know that because I didn't show that to anybody. Yes. You know how you have your insecurities, or you know, you know, you feel like you're not good enough, mm -hmm. and you feel like I think people don't, don't really understand. Yes. The track, like the track you're on, and you're like, but you don't want to show people. Yes. That you know you don't show them because if you do, it's not good for you. It's not good at all. And when you say that, it's very familiar. I mean, I think we all have those moments when we feel insecure. I've had those moments as well. Mm. Even at my concerts, you know, when I get out and I see a full audience and then the next minute, fear just grips me. And I'm like, I better, I better impress <laughs> these people because they're here. <laughs> they've left their homes. They've paid. I know. I better do a good job. And then that starts to freak me out. Mm. So I think we all have those insecurities. It's very normal. Mm. What are those moments that stand out for you that have challenged you through your career? The ones you can remember. And there was a time we used to do, we used to sing like those songs, other people's songs, mm. still in Gagamil, but mm. in different bars on yeah. different days. Mm. Yes. And 
those were the days when you know we didn't have like tours with our boys and all that mm. so we used to go to different bars and then you sing and sometimes he appears at the end of the you know the of the night he sings a song or two or sometimes he doesn't so you, you guys sing and that's it gagamel mm. nights mm -hmm. so one time i'm on stage and then some guy sends a, a girl tell her to give me her number mm -hmm. i was like ah. of course i couldn't mm. Even does that. Like, okay, people do that, but these ones were very rude. So I walked off. So as we were leaving at the end of the show, the guy comes in with that girl. I think mm -hmm. she was a sister to him. Mm -hmm. They almost wanted to slap me. Who the hell do you even think you are? Cannot you to a number? At that moment, I felt like a prostitute. Yes. I felt so bad. I yes. think that was my last day to sing in a bar, like, do those nights in different bars because yeah. i went to my boss and i was like no i'm tired people are looking at us like prostitutes exactly you know like how how how, how do you refuse to give me your number who the who hell do you think, think you, you are? are because they see you on stage smiling to everyone you know trying to be nice mm -hmm. they think they can do anything to you i felt so bad that is so familiar. i felt so bad yeah the girl was really mad it's like who do you even think you are like he made me feel like it's it's an obligation like i have exactly. to do it like it's you have a part to. of you don't even job. have an option get off stage come yes. find me i felt so bad i and felt I, so bad honestly that is one of the biggest problems i think we face as women in 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 showbiz there's a way not all the male fans of course but some of those fans mm -hmm. who look at us like an object out to you know, entertain him, not just on stage. But when you get off stage, can you come and entertain me at my house? I had a similar experience, but mine, this person had my number and sent me a text one time. I was at home, normal evening, chilling out, quiet. And I get a text from this guy and he tells me, hi, I'm your fan. I love your music, but how much would it cost for a night? Wow. I said, wow. Wow. So in his head, all that time he's been watching me on stage performing. I think his definition of a female artist was someone who actually goes beyond the stage and comes and entertains you in your house. Mm. And that for me has been one of the most annoying things in showbiz, that men think women are there to please them, you know, beyond the, uh, beyond the stage. It is very disrespectful. Very disrespectful. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, mm. on a lighter note, are there any women that you would give credit to contributing to your success? Are there any women who've helped you? Yeah. Um, I give a lot of credit to to Halima. Yeah. Mami Halima. Mm. Uh, I didn't know how to stand on the microphone, like in studio, like how you record, how far you have to be from the microphone, how close, how to use it and all that. I'd never been in studio before. She took me to studio. Wow. So she gave you your yeah. steps. And she used to tell me, when you're not at school, holiday, get like three days in a week. Yeah. Pass by, see how people record, get confidence. Because she was like, you have to be confident first for you to record. So I had to learn how people record, how it look, like before you're like, how, you don't even know the feeling. Like how do you get in studio? How do you start recording? Do you overshout? Do you do this? Like, <laughs> I didn't know, I had so many things in my head, but she helped me <clears throat> and okay. I give her credit for that. Okay, so basically Halima has, is that woman that stands out for you? Yes. Uh, who's done, who's been there for you and, uh, you know, gave you the first steps to starting your career. Yes, she so made me realize that, yeah, I could have a career. Yeah. You like you could eat off your talent. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I really didn't know. But yeah. She was like, yeah, you could, you could turn this into, you know, like a business a career. or something. Career. And I'm so grateful to her. As women, I believe that um, we can help each other mm. in the industry. Something that, of course, along the way throughout my career, I noticed that some females tend to shy away from that.
though I believe that, you know, when we come together, there's so many things we can do and there's so many ways we can elevate each other. True. How do you feel we could help each other as women in the industry? First thing is believing in each other mm. because we all have our different, like we're all talented in different areas. Yes. Um, we sound different, we perform differently, we do things differently. Mm. So we have to like appreciate each other in our different ways. Yeah. And most importantly, we have to like... Support it, each other? Yes, yeah, support each other. And yeah. another thing, I think people don't, people don't believe in being different, unique, mm. coming out with their own style. Yeah. But if you talk to someone, because some people come out, before they actually realize mm. what they can do, who they are. Mm. You know, you're like, you want to be Juliana. Mm. So you start like, oh, I want to sing like Juliana. You start faking it, like you, you want to sound like Juliana. Yeah, yeah. In actual sense, you don't sound like Juliana. Mm. You understand? You can sound like you. Mm. You can discover yourself. But if someone talks to you and it's, you know, you know what? Yeah. You can be yourself. Yes. You know, yeah. we should love each other, talk exactly. to each other. Exactly. There's some things you don't know yes. that, you know, you can learn. Yeah. If you meet Julie, she's like, you know, things, it, it could be something different, not about singing, but the way you dress. You know, yeah. Rema, yeah. I think you should do this and that. It can help you career-wise, mm. you know. Mm. And, you know, we need to talk to each other. We need to love each other. That's what I think. Be there for each other. Be there for each, each other. other. But we don't. Each other's back. I don't, I don't even see music. I, I think we need to do better in that area. A lot. And I'm, take, I'm, I'm including myself. So lastly, Hi. my darling Tolari. Rema. <laughs> That's lastly. Mm -hmm. Fire I away. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because we love her so much. Mm. I don't Thank know. Thank you. How do you take all that in? People love you so much. It's too, like, it's too, it's too. I thank God for it. It's it, I thank God for it, but it's um, for me sometimes I t I look at it as a blessing, but I also look at it as a responsibility. When when people tell you they love you, they look up to you. You must never, you must never disappoint them, and that is a responsibility. But above and beyond that, I I I, I take it, I receive it, and I thank God for the blessing. It's a blessing from God. Yes, it is. Yes, I was saying talent. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me tell you something about me though. Mm. And I think this is something people don't know or don't understand about me. Mm. I'm an introvert. I love to be by myself. Um, apart from, aside from, you know, being on stage and being in the public eye and doing those public events. The moment I'm done with that, I just want to run home and sit at home and put on my Watch series movies. or cook a meal. If I'm hosting people, I like to host them at home. I am such a private, like I, I'm an introvert. And I think that's why people tend to think, but that's just my personality. But I think that would be you still if, even if you, you were a musician or not. Yeah, it would still be me. Yeah. Definitely, I would never change. I've, if, tried, if, I've tried to like study you in a way. <laughs> and I was like, I think that would be her. I'm well, you. But the meme, you be him, you know. Yes, that would yeah. be me. Even my family. Like if you talk to my mom, my pa my, my my cousins, my sister, they will all tell you the same thing. Like I am such a quiet, private person. I spend a lot of time to myself. I know that I'm bored. Trust me, I'm not bored. I'm probably reading a book. I'm probably watching a movie, but I just love my me time so much. My family sometimes also has to look for me, like my cousins and my uncle. They, at home, they call me Yana. That's my name from the time I was a child. So, you know, sometimes my uncles call me Yana. But I'm at home, quiet, you know. Enjoying yourself. Enjoying my me time. So, um, finally, uh, Rema, there's many girls out there who love you. I hope you know it, by the way. There's a lot of mm -hmm. young girls who love you. Same here. But the girls who have not yet um, chosen a career path mm. but would love to be you, would love to be like you, would love to be musicians and hope, you know, hopefully one day succeed like you, what would you tell that girl? 
both good and bad, to prepare mm. her for the journey? Yes, there's wanting to be something, but you must have a passion for it. Because mm. if you have a passion, whatever happens, you're like, I'm not giving up. Yes. I love this. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving up. Yeah. You know, um, they must really have that big passion for it. Because people just want to join the industry because they see people are making money, people are famous, you know. And they're like, ah, ah. They, you know? they see the glamorous image, mm -hmm. but they don't know what happens behind the scenes. True. Sure. And I think <laughs> most of these things we see on Instagram and all that, they're not real. Yes. You know. Yes. <laughs> and they need to know that, by real. the way. And people don't know. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you're in the mood of something and you just, you just want to show people that. Mm. But, but people don't know. They feel the like real, it's... <laughs> yeah, they don't know the real life behind it. <laughs> they don't know. You and know. this is not to say that you're faking it or anything, but <laughs> they just need to know that, you know, when they see you looking glamorous um, um, on Instagram, mm. you probably just had a stressful evening the night before. Mm. Maybe you were at an event and maybe someone s shouted at you. Or is they don't or know you that just part. even cried uh, like 30 minutes back. You see? People don't know. Yeah. And you should stay human because mm. people tend to be taken up, you know, by this fame and everything. They forget themselves. Mm -hmm. You just have to stay you. Be real. Be yourself. Be real. Be real. People will love you either way. Yeah. You don't have to be, you don't have to be wild. You don't have to, I mean, unless that's you. Yeah. Yeah. You're wild. You're crazy. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But if, if that's not you, you don't have to fake anything. Just be you. Just be Those you. who love you will love you love either way. You. Yeah. And, um, Basically, they just have the passion. Bad passion, you just said passion, right? Yes. Because if you have passion. passion, that runs everything. Yes. The moment you love what you do, me, I keep telling people, the mm. moment you love what you do, it ceases to be work. Mm. Because mm. You, you love it so much. Enjoy yourself. And things happen. Like, you see things happening, just happening. Yes. Hard work, passion, and yeah. be real. It's been lovely having you <laughs> on the show thank you so much thank for coming so much. and for making time <laughs> thank again you so much. we need to do a cup of tea one of these days yes we should not this stuff just sit down <laughs> have coffee mm. and cake i don't know that you love that stuff i have I a weakness for cake <laughs> i do that's my weakness give me cake and i'm your best friend oh really mm -hmm. you can have it any day anytime any day anytime thank you so much for inviting me here. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. You should meet me again. Like I will. Oh. I'm enjoying the whole thing. We have a lot to I talk about. I don't even about. want it to stop. I definitely will. <laughs>